So, the most important thing to know about string railway is that I'm not angry with it. It's, it's, it's different than that. It's just... It's just... I like games that do a lot with a little, and, and I like games that are tactile, and I like games that are fun, that anyone can play, and I like trains. I've loved trains since, since I was a kid. And uh, basically, this idea is mine. It's just Hisashi Hayashi had it first. He's basically a thief. He's, uh, he's basically, if he's watching, he's a thief. And, and we don't have anything else to review this week anyway, so. String Railway, here's what you get in the box. Well, actually, first of all, look, look at that lovely non-standard sized box. Um, I mean, I'd have done it a bit better, but, well, actually, first of all, I mean, technically, I didn't have this idea exactly, um, or at all, but I was going to in the future, and that's what matters. So you get a nice non-standard long manual, you get a nice, thing of non-standard cards, and then you get a lot of string, and you get some some tokens, uh, and some wood. So everything very nice, very colourful, but what's really nice about String Railway is the fact that the game starts with something really funny, which is always, always a plus in my book. It goes a bit like this. Okay, everyone, look, it's Japan. This is Japan. It doesn't look like Japan. No, but it, it is, it's Japan. It's a, it's, look at it. It doesn't, it's not Japan. I don't, ah. Oh. It's Japan, look. Ah. Oh. Okay, now, first of all, who wants to place the mountain? Oh my God. Oh, I wanna, I wanna do it. I wanna place the mountain. Just, I just, okay, uh, I, Is that, ah, uh, what is, uh, I'll give you one job. Does it have a name? Because it should be called Crack Mountain. Right, let's just, let's just put this mountain behind us. Okay, who, who wants to place the river? And that's great. I mean, you don't actually have to abuse your friends for failing to place the mountain or the river correctly, but I recommend it because it's going to get everybody laughing before you've even started. So, how do you actually play String Railway? How do you have all that fun that I'm promising and I'm talking about? Well, Basically, what you have to do is win the train war, because the trains have gone to war, like the Ents that go to war in Lord of the Rings. Um, there's no actual backstory in String Railway's manual. You might like to imagine that you're trying to build the best capitalist train network. Uh, it's up to you. And you'll be doing this, anyway, with some string. These are your train tracks. You get four short ones and one very long one. And already, hopefully, you can see that this is just fabulous stuff to play with. It might seem stupid playing with string, but it's not. Um, so, on your turn, you're going to be drawing a station off this station deck. Look at this, look here. That's a two-point station. That means it's two points if you can connect to it. And you then place this anywhere on the table, and you connect to it with a piece of string, like so. That's great. Except it's not. Look at green over there. Hello! I'm the green player, and I look like the yellow player, but I'm not. So, it's now green's turn. He draws a station as normal. Oh, it's a, it's a three-point station. That's really good. It's a city station. He's going to connect to that. But, this is where the game of String Railway begins. Because rather than placing it, you know, and then connecting a line to it as normal, here's what green does. Green takes his long string, and he connects it in a zigzag, connecting to yellow station and his home station and the new station, giving him two points plus three points for five points. And he's now already got a launch pad for later turns to spread out across the region. He jumps on yellow's points. Now we're playing string railway. And what gives the game incredible flexibility is you never know what this deck's gonna cough up. Look here, a scenic station worth extra points if you place it in the mountain or a country station worth no points, but nobody else can connect to it. But when you draw it, you get to draw another station. Country stations are great, helping out the countryside. But there's a problem. And the problem you're dealing with isn't just that other players can connect to your station for points, it's that crossing a string isn't something you can't do. 
it just costs you a point for every string you cross over. At this point, you're probably seeing why this game's quite so clever. It's the fact that it's all so simple. There are about three rules, and yet you just get incredible strategy just spilling out from it as if you open some kind of rule Pandora's box. Okay, look, it's Red's second turn. He's got one city station here, he draws a card. It's a country station, gets to draw another station. It's a city station, so the country station only one person can connect to. However, he's got a city station which Purple here could connect to. So what, is he, what he does is he places that city station there, spools outwards in a this woodly way, nudges this red line right up to the river, then places the country station there. And what he's done there is he's scored himself two points, but he's created a sort of wall running along there that Purple's going to have a very difficult time getting through. Now you're playing String Railway. Now the trains are at war. In other words, because you only have five tracks to place, a game of String Railway will only see you making five decisions. But don't worry, a game will still take a perfectly shaped 25 minutes, and these are difficult decisions, and on top of all that, it's extremely cool seeing the board turn into an actual train track layout thing. It really genuinely does look like you're building something believable with your friends. Oh, and don't worry about the four player setup we've got here. There's also a difficult two-player variant where you each control two stations and a three-player variant uh, where you play in a three-sided shape or triangle and a five-player variant where you play in a five-sided shape or fivergram. There's even a variant where you play with a non-standard shape, though the manual quaintly suggests that this isn't recommended. So, to recap, we've got a game here that's accessible, that's funny, that's thematic, that's deep, and that can take any number of players, which is all great. But, if there's a problem with String Railway, it's that it's not really the sexy bullet train on the front of the box. Rather, it's more of a profoundly unsexy steam engine. Yeah, the game is deep, but the problem with that is that it means players can take a lot of time on their go. Especially so because you don't know what you're going to draw. You don't know if you're going to get a country station that'll let you block someone off, a valuable city station, a mountain station, or one of the stations you have to mark with an adorable little station piece of wood. That means that if players connect to it, you'll either gain points or lose points. So you spend a lot of time waiting for your go, and that's something that so many of the games that Shut Up and Sit Down cover actually manage to avoid, or at least sequester away, like some dark little secret. But you forgive String Railway for all of this, because it's just joyous. It's not a great game, but it's a good game that you will never, ever regret that you buy, because it just lets you play with string in a world of Wikipedia and Apple Mac tops and tweets coming at you from angles, and Facebook- Oh, I must check my Facebook, actually. Brendan! Brendan! Can you set this up? Because people are going to be here sooner. I am going to get some food.